Hello and welcome back to the channel. We have another Construct 3 tutorial today. So let's take a look at what we're doing. Uh, I have a little green rectangle here that is our player. I can move left and right. And then I have this red box over here. This is kind of our objective or our goal. So what we can do is if our player is close enough or overlapping our objective area here, if I hold down the space key, you can see it starts to fill a radial meter. And if I let go of the space key, it decreases. So as long as I have it held down, it grows. When I let up, it shrinks. In this case, uh, just for example, we are going to change the color of our player object from green to blue and we'll add a little animation to the meter itself. And I'll show you what that looks like whenever we complete the meter all the way. It turns blue, it animates out, and our character turns blue. So before we get started, if you are not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and hit that big red button. That sure would help me out a lot. Make sure that bell is ticked and the thumbs up is pressed as well while you're at it. That helps out a small YouTube creator like myself. So a couple examples that I used to make this little feature. One is a game called This War of Mine. You can see when you are trying to accomplish a certain task within the game, you have this meter that indicates your progress. Another example is a much more popular game called No Man's Sky. This game uses the radial meter as a selection. So instead of just tapping a button or a key, you hold down for a short period of time and as soon as that radial meter fills up, you have made a selection. So just to give you an idea of the outcome that we are going for, all right, I am inside a brand new project here in Construct 3. Just from the Construct 3 start page, select new, and I am set up as a 1920 by 1080 HD project. And since we're only going to be messing around in this HD viewport where you see this line, I don't need all this extra space in my layout. So something I like to do is we click on the layout, come over to the properties, go to view, highlight the viewport size, Control C to copy, click on the layout again, come over to the properties, highlight the size, Control V to paste, and then click on layout one more time. And we have a 1920 by 1080 workspace because this is all we're going to use in this example. Okay, let's create a few objects so we can test out this idea. I'm going to double click on the layout and scroll down to sprite and I'll insert a sprite. I'll change the size, a width of 60, height of 120, and I will get the origin point tool and put it in the bottom middle. Let's get the paint bucket tool and I'm just gonna get a green color and fill that in. Make sure your collision polygon covers the whole block. And let's exit out. I'll rename it player. And while we have the player object selected and the properties up, I'm going to Go ahead, go down here to edit behaviors. Let's add a new behavior and scroll down a little bit and let's get the platform behavior. And I'll set uh, max speed to 400, acceleration and deceleration, both the 3000. I don't use the jump in my version of this project, but if you wanted to, this is what I played around with before I decided to not include jump, but uh, 1,000 for jump strength, 3,000 for gravity, or you can play around with that. Everything else looks good except for default controls. I want to use my own controls, so I'm going to untick default controls. If you just want to use your arrow keys to control your player, then click default controls and you're done. I like to set up WASD in any of my games, or in this case, it'll just be A and D for left and right. So I'm going to untick default controls. Okay, back on our layout, let's double click anywhere again and go get another sprite, insert that. And I'm going to change this to, let's say 64 by 64. And then I'm going to get a brownish color, something like that. I'll fill it in, uh, maybe a little darker. Okay, and then let's make sure that the origin point is in one of the corners. I like to go to the top left. And then again, make sure the collision box covers the whole sprite. Let's exit out of that and rename it ground. And with it still selected, let's add a behavior, new behavior and get the solid. So now our player platform behavior 
can interact with the solid. And then I'll click on the layout itself and turn my snap to grid on. And then I'm just gonna get my brown ground object and go about one third of the way up. And then we can put our player down there. And I don't have any controls set up yet, so I can't test it out quite yet. Instead, I'm going to create one more object here. Let's double click, go down to Sprite, insert that, and I'm going to resize this to 150 by 150. And I'm gonna get a red color and fill that in. Then I'm gonna set the origin point to the bottom middle. And then this is pretty important just for the example that I am going to use in this project. Make sure the collision polygon covers the entire square because I am actually gonna go in, configure grid, we're 150 by 150, I'm going to say 10 by 10, and if your grid's not on, you can toggle it with this button up here. And then I'm gonna kinda zoom in a little here and get my selection tool, and I'm just gonna draw a box over the first two columns, which will be 20 pixels, and hit delete, and do the same thing to the other side. So what this does is visually on screen, this will be our goal, more of a rectangle than a square. Our collision box will actually be a little bit bigger. That way our player can still overlap the collision box and meet the conditions necessary to fill our meter up. It doesn't necessarily have to be overlapping our objective here. Just a little cushion that we can throw in. Okay, I'm going to exit out of that and with it selected, I'm gonna rename this goal. And our goal does not need any behaviors. I'm going to just set it somewhere, flush with the ground object. And then I am going to click on the layer zero and go over here to background color. And I hate that light gray color, so I'm just gonna drag this down till it's a real nice dark gray. Something like that. Before we go on, if you have not saved your project yet, hit this little disc icon. So go ahead and save your project and I will do the same. Okay, let's give our player some controls so we can test this project out. So I'm gonna go over here to the object types folder and right click and add a new object type. And I'm gonna type in keyboard and add that. So now we can access the keyboard object. I'm gonna go over to the event sheet and add an event, go to the keyboard and key is down. And I'll click to choose the A key so with this whole block highlighted, I'm going to hit Control C to copy, Control V to paste. We can double click this event and go change that A to AD. And then let's add an action to our A is down. I'm going to grab the player object, scroll down to the platform behavior and simulate control and A will be left. And then with that highlighted, I'll hold down Control, click and drag a copy down here. And then we can double click to go into that one and change left to right. So now we have A is down, going left, D is down, going right. And now if we play, we have all our components and I can use A and D to move left and right. Okay, I'm going to right click in a blank space and add group. And I'll call this player controls. And then I will highlight these and drag them into that group. And we can close that group up. Okay, let's go back over to the layout and create a couple more objects. I wanna start creating the bars that you saw in the beginning of this video where the meter is growing in size. So let's double click and go down to Sprite and I'll insert this somewhere above our player's head. I'm gonna change the size to 64 by 64. Reconfigure our grid since we're at 64 by 64. I'm gonna go with an even eight by eight. So we have an even amount of evenly spaced squares here in our grid. And then let's get our origin point and we want the bottom middle. And then I'm gonna get the rectangle tool. Let's check both border and fill with a border thickness of zero. And I'm going to get a solid white color. And then I'm gonna start down here at the bottom on our middle line, I'm going to go one pixel to the left of it and then go two pixels to the left of it then click and drag and let's go up to what is that one two three four five six squares up and then I will make it even 
two pixels on either side of that middle grid line. So something like that. When we get this mechanic set up, we will come back and we will change this and I'll show you how easy it is to change the look of what this meter will look like. Okay, that should be all that we have to do with this. I'm going to exit out and with it selected, let's rename this meter bar. So how this is going to work, I'm going to create another object where we will spawn the bars from and then we will make sure that that reference point follows our players every move. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to double click in a blank space and get another sprite. Insert it. Uh, I'm going to make this one 32 by 32. Doesn't really matter. It's uh, not going to be seen in the final project. And I'm going to pick a nice bright yellow color. Fill that. And then this is pretty important. Let's make sure the origin point is right in the middle of our object. So the X and the Y are both going to be 16. Okay, let's exit out of that. And I'm going to rename this meter spawn. Okay, let's go over to the event sheet and set some stuff up. The first thing I wanna do is make sure that our meter spawn is in place and following our player. So let's add an event and let's go into system and I'm gonna type in start on start of layout. Let's add an action and go to our meter spawn and let's set its position. So type in set position and the X is going to be wherever our player's X value is. So player.x and then uh, we can type in player.y and then we'll go look to see what this does. So if we play, it goes right where the origin point of our player object is, which is at the bottom middle of the green player object. So it's at the player's X and Y value. Now if I move, it doesn't move with me because we haven't told it to yet. But I want this spawn to be up here above our player. And I want to make sure that our meter bar, whenever it is rotated the other way, straight down, that it's not covering our player and it's not too far up. So, uh, you know, somewhere right around there is probably a pretty good distance above our player's head whenever it is facing straight down. I'm gonna go ahead and reset that to zero. If I want the bars to spawn there, then I need to make sure that my meter spawn object is in that position. So back on our event sheet, let's double click to go back into this. So on the Y value, I want it to be above our player object. So what we can do is say, the player's Y, which will be at the feet of the player object, and then we want to subtract to go up the screen because the smaller the Y value, the higher up the screen it is. And we could say minus, and let's just use our object's height. So minus player dot height. And if we play that, now it's at the where the origin point would be if we had set it at the top middle of the player object, but I still want it to go up a little further so that it's not overlapping our player. So we can come back in here and I want to add more to this value of player height because our player is 60 by 120 and the Y value is that 120. So I'm saying player Y minus 120, but I'm going to add, let's say 80 more pixels. So if I do it like this, we're down here overlapping the player right around the waist. But if we go in here and we make this its own number by putting parentheses around the equation. So now we're saying the player's Y minus whatever player height, which is 120 plus 80, which would make it 200 pixels. So player Y minus 200. Hit done, hit play, and there is the position for our meter spawn. Okay, let's exit out of that. Come back over here and add an action. And I want to make this meter spawn follow the player object. And there's a couple ways we can do this. One way is we could add the pin behavior to meter spawn and then just pin it to the player. And that would work fine. We could also create an every tick event and set the position every frame of the game to our player minus this player height plus 80 or we could make the meter spawn object a child of the player object. That way, no matter what the player does, 
the meter spawn will mimic everything the player does. And that's how we're going to do this version. So we need to go into our player and we can scroll down to add child. So we want to add a child to our player object. And we can click and choose the meter spawn. And I want the X and we don't really need the Y because I don't have a jump. But if you have a project where you're going to change elevations in any way, you would want that Y checked. Uh, we don't need width, height, angle, or Z elevation. Just X and Y, and let's hit done. And then if we play, now it follows us wherever we go. Okay, there's a couple of things. Actually, let's go back in. I want to show you. If I go over here to the goal, uh, I want to take care of this because I want the player to be overlapping the goal and not the other way around. Let's go over to our layout, and I am going to right-click on the player object, go to Z order, send to top of layer. Now every time we start the project, we will be above any other sprites. Okay. Okay, if you have not saved in a while, let's make sure that we are continuing to save. So one of the things that's going to happen is when we start creating the meter bar on screen while the game's running, we're going to create each bar individually and then destroy them as the meter shrinks. So having this example meter bar object over here is actually going to mess up some of our variables when we're trying to count how many of these bars are on screen. So we don't actually need this in the project when we start the game, but we do need it in the project to make sure that all the attributes that we've set up for it are intact and to make sure that it loads into the game with the size and everything that we have set up for it. So instead of destroying it here in the layout, I'm going to let it load into the game and then we can destroy it because we won't need it anymore, but we'll keep all of the values and attributes for that object. So let's go back over to the event sheet and here in our on start of layout, let's add an action, get our meter bar and type in destroy. And then I'm going to actually move that action to the top so that that happens first. And now we can start setting up the logic for how this is going to work. So for now, I'm going to close our setup group and we'll work just in the meter group for a while. So I'm going to want to make some states. That way we can easily control what happens depending on what state we're in. And I'm gonna create those states within our player object because that player object is always going to be with us in the game. So I'm going to need a state of where the meter is growing and a state where the meter is shrinking. And we'll also need a state of when the meter grows all the way and completes. So with our player object selected, let's go over to the properties and I'm going to edit instance variables, add a new variable, and I'm going to call this meter state. And I'm going to change the type to a string because we're going to need three states and I want to be able to name them something specific. Okay, let's exit out of that. Let's go over to the event sheet and start setting this up. In our meter group, let's add an event to meter and go into our player. And let's scroll down to our instance variables and I want to compare instance variables and there's our meter state string. In between quotation marks, I wanna know if this is equal to, uh, let's say grow. This will be when our meter is in the state of growing in a radial pattern. And then with that highlighted like that, control C to copy, control V to paste. And then we can go into this event and I'm gonna change grow to shrink and then let's control V to paste one more time. And I'll go into this one and this one will be called full. So we have three states, three individual events that compare what state we're in. Now I also want to be able to tell how many of these bars are currently on screen. So when they start getting created, I need to count each one of them. And then when they get destroyed, I need to update that amount. Let's select the meter spawn object and let's create a variable to keep track of those values. So in the meter spawn object, go over to the properties, edit instance variables. Let's add a new instance variable and I'm going to call this bar count. And this will be a number. And we're going to need another variable that will limit how many bars can appear on screen. We want to make sure that we have the right amount of bars to make up a 360 degree circle. But we also want the ability to change that later on. 
So let's make a variable that limits how many bars make up a radial pattern. So let's add another instance variable and I'll call this one bar limit. And that will be a number. And then we can exit out of that and head back over to the event sheet. In our first event up here, our grow event, if we click on the left side of it, it highlights the whole thing and we can press B on the keyboard to get a sub event. So now that we have indented under this grow state, event, everything we put under it that is indented will only happen when we're in this state. So let's decide what happens when we're in the grow state. I'm going to say as long as our bar count variable is not equal to the bar limit, then we need to add more bars. Let's say our bar limit is 10. You can go ahead and type in 10 to bar limit over here in the properties. So as long as our bar count is not up to 10 yet, then we can start adding more bars. So let's go ahead and put that logic in here in this sub event. So let's double click and go into our meter spawn, scroll down to the instance variables and let's compare instance variables. And I want to know if the bar count is less than our bar limit. And since we're already in the meter spawn object, we can just type in self and then dot and the name of that variable, which is bar limit. So now I'm going to click on the left side of this event and highlight the whole thing, press B on the keyboard, and it gives us another sub event under that. Each time we indent, the furthest indented event can only occur if the next furthest indented event is true. So let's go down to our new sub event and I'm going to double click to go into it we'll give it a time to create the bars. If we go into system and type in every, and I'm going to go every X seconds, I'm going to try 0 0.3. Every 0 0.3 seconds, let's create those bars. Remember when we set this up, we made this meter spawn object so that we could make sure our meter bars always got created wherever this spawn point is, even if our player is moving around. So let's add an action to this go into our meter spawn object and I'm going to type in spawn another object and click to choose the meter bar and the layer is going to be zero. We only have the one layer in this project and image point is going to be zero, which will be right in the center of our meter spawn object. Okay. Once we spawn that meter bar, we want to do the same thing we did with our meter spawn object. We want to make sure that our meter bar follows our meter spawn. So let's set that up the same way we did with the player object, except this time we want to make the meter bar a child of the meter spawn. So let's add an action under that, go into our meter spawn object, and I'm going to type in child, add child, and we'll click to choose meter bar. And again, we do not need width, height, angle, or Z elevation, just X and Y is fine. And if we tried to play this right now, it wouldn't do anything because our player object has this meter state variable, but it has no value to it. And this will only happen if the value of meter state is set to grow. So let's set up a way to test that. I'm going to add an event to meter, go into keyboard, and I'm going to say while key is down, and I'll choose, I'm going to go with the space bar. I will add an action and go into our player, scroll down to our instance variables and set value of our meter state to grow. And then I'm going to drag this to the top of our meter group just for organizational purposes. So now I'm going to debug, play this in debug and we can go to our player object and we have our meter state variable right here and it's blank. But if I press space, you see it turns to grow. And something else that's happening is our meter bars are creating a new meter bar every 0 0.3 seconds. So we have uh, several meter bars. Uh, you can tell right here we're in the 50s and now we're in the 60s. So it's going to just keep creating meter bars right there in the same exact spot until we change this state. Let's exit out of that. So the reason it never stopped is because this condition right here says bar count is less than bar limit. Well, bar count never changed. Bar count was always zero because that's the default. 
we never changed it in our code. So every time we create a bar, or every time we spawn one, I want to add that to our bar count variable. But I don't want to put it in this every three seconds event. I want to put it in its own event after this code has taken place. So with this highlighted, I'm going to press B and create another sub event. And something to understand is that while our state is grow, this is going to occur every frame of the game. Except when it gets here, it's going to detect if it has spawned a bar within the last 0.3 seconds. Otherwise, it's going to move on down to this event. So every frame of the game, I'm going to count how many bars are on screen. And by setting it up the way that I'm going to set it up, this will help when we move into the shrink state. So let's double click to go into this blank event and I'm gonna go into system and I'm going to use a loop to count how many bars have been created. So I'm going to type in four, F-O-R, and I want four each. And now we can pick for each what? For each object, for each meter bar object, every time this loop runs, it's going to count how many bars are on screen. And for each bar, I want to add to this bar count variable. So let's add an action, get our meter spawn, and scroll down to the instance variables. And I'm going to go to add to, bar count is the variable we want, and one is the value we want to add. So if I go back and debug layout, and I'm going to get our meter spawn object, and we have our bar count and bar limit variables here. Our bar count is at zero, and if I hit space, every time a bar is created and that loop runs, it counts how many bars are on screen. And you'll notice this time it stopped at 10 because we set up that condition if bar count is less than bar limit to run that code. But once that condition is no longer true, it's not going to run that code, which means it's going to stop spawning bars. So I am going to exit out of that. And let's go ahead and save while we're thinking about it. All right, another one of the things we can go ahead and handle right now is when we play this, you notice that it keeps creating the bar in the exact same spot, which ultimately that is what we want, but we don't want it to be at the same angle straight up. I want each one to come out at a different angle until it makes a 360 degree pattern. So since we already have this, uh, what is essentially a loop, every 0.3 seconds, we're running the same code. Each time it runs, I want to change its angle. Once we're in the grow state and our bar count is still less than the bar limit, we're creating a bar every 0.3 seconds. Each time we create a bar, let's set the angle. So I'm going to add an action and go into meter bar and I'm going to set angle. So if I have a bar limit of 10, that means I'm going to create 10 bars. If we have 360 degrees to complete a full circle, 10 bars would have to be 360 divided by 10 to be evenly separated. So 360 degrees divided by 10 would be 36 degrees. So the angle I'm going to set is 36 degrees, but I want each bar created to be 36 degrees beyond whatever the angle of the last bar created. So each time this code runs, we'll add 36 degrees. And one way we can do that is knowing that this bar count has one added to it every time this little block of code runs. So each time this runs, we can set the angle to that 36 degrees and multiply it by how many bars we have already created. So angle is going to be 36 degrees times and we'll have to access this bar count instance variable, which is in our meter spawn object. So let's grab the meter spawn object dot bar count. Okay, let's see what that looks like. I hit space, and there we go. A perfect one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten bars evenly spaced in a 360 degree pattern. Okay? So what if I want to come in and change the bar limit? If I want more than just 10 bars to appear, what if I want, uh, let's say 20? Well, I'd have to come back over here and instead of that 36, I would need to divide 360 degrees by 20, which would be 18. So I'd have to come back in here and change this to 18. And then if we play and I press space, we get the same effect 
and it's perfectly spaced apart, but now we're creating 20 bars. Well, if I want to play around with this, I don't want to have to come in here and do this math every time. So instead of changing this number, this 18 or this 36, I'm just going to do a very simple equation to make sure that no matter how many bars are in our bar limit variable, this equation will always update to that. So let's set that up. I'm going to highlight all this and delete it. So the equation is going to look something like this. If we take our meter spawn object and we get the bar count variable, and then we can multiply that by that 36 or that 18 or whatever it happens to be, which what we were doing to get that number, we were saying 360 degrees divided by whatever number was bar limit. So let's just put that equation in here. And to get it, we'll need to put it in between parentheses so that it calculates first and then multiplies by this meter spawn bar count. So in between the parentheses, let's type in the 360 degrees, and then we're going to divide that by the meter spawn, and this time we'll grab that bar limit. So now, what this says, what we have over here is whatever the bar count happens to be during that loop through this code, multiplied by 360 degrees divided by whatever this number is going to be. So I'll hit done, and then we can come over here and we can change this. I'll change this to 50, and let's play. I'll hit space, and there it is. They're perfectly spread apart, equal distances, and I'm not gonna wait for that to finish. Or I can come in here and I can change this, uh, let's say to, let's just say to seven, an odd number. And there it is. That equation takes care of any spacing and angle issues that we may have. Okay, I'm gonna set this back to 10 for right now. We'll come back and play with this again later. Another thing I want to change is this every 0.3 seconds. This isn't always going to be the case. You notice whenever we had just seven bars, it went a lot faster. But when I put in 50, it was taking forever to complete. That's because it's however many uh, bar limit you have times 0.3 seconds. So there may need to be times where we need to change this time. So instead of coming in here and changing it in the code, I'm going to create a variable for that as well. So let's go into our instance variables in our meter spawn object, and I'm going to add a new instance variable, and I'm gonna call this meter speed. And I'll change the value to that 0 0.3. And then we can come in here and change this every X seconds to the meter spawn object. And then get that variable that we just created, which is meter speed. Okay. And then if we play, same results. All right. Now we know how to make it grow. Let's go ahead and move on to making it shrink. If we scroll down here where we set up our meter state equals shrink. I'm going to click on the left part of that to highlight the whole thing and press B on the keyboard to create a sub event. So now anything we put indented underneath this shrink can take place, but only if the state variable has been set to shrink. And we'll set that to either grow or shrink or full a little bit later. But now I want to set up what it does if it is shrink. If we're holding space, it'll grow It'll keep adding bars. If we let up on space, it will take bars away, which is the shrink state. But I only want it to shrink or take bars away if there's bars on screen. So in our event sheet, in this sub event, we can ask, is our bar count variable more than zero? So let's double click on the event and go into our meter spawn object, scroll down to instance variables, compare variable. And I want to know if bar count is greater than zero. So let's highlight this whole block right here and press B to get another sub event because we only want this next piece of code to happen if there are bars on screen. So in this one, I want to do what we did up here. I want it to shrink at the same speed that it created. So let's double click to go into this event and let's go into our system and I'm going to type in every X seconds and we'll type in the same code here, which was that meter spawn variable of meter speed, meter spawn dot meter speed. I only want it to delete the bar that was created last. So we need a way to tell construct three, which meter bar is what. So what we can do is get our meter bar object 
And each time one of these is created, we can assign a number to it and then reference that in this section of the code. So let's click on our meter bar object, go over to the properties and let's edit instance variables and add a new instance variable. I'm gonna call this one bar number and it's gonna be a number. We can exit out of that and then let's click on the left part of this to highlight the whole block and press B to create another sub event. So every 0.3 seconds, then we can come in here and check which bar we want to delete. So let's double click on that and let's go to our meter bar object and scroll down to compare instance variable. We can use the bar count variable number that's in our meter spawn. So when we create the meter bar, we'll have to assign it a number based on where our bar count variable is. So let's go ahead and plug that variable in here. I'm gonna get our meter spawn object dot bar count. And then we can come back up here into our grow state. And when we are creating a meter bar object, at the same time that we create it, make it a child and set its angle, we can also give it its own number. So let's add an action and let's go get the meter bar and scroll down to the set value. And it only has the one variable, which is the bar number we just created. And I'm going to set it to whatever this bar count variable in our meter spawn object is. So we can go get meter spawn dot bar count. Now we do have one issue. If I leave it like this, the first one is going to be numbered zero. And down here we have this condition where we only run this code if we are above zero in our bar count. So what we need to do is let's go back into this and say meter spawn dot bar count plus one. So we can come down here and in our bar number equals the meter spawn dot bar count, I am going to add an action, go into meter bar, and I'm gonna type in destroy, but we also want to update that meter spawn bar count number. So we'll need to add an action, go into our meter spawn, scroll down. This time we can say subtract from, and that'll be bar count number, value of one. And that is how we will set up our shrink state. We do have one more thing to add to this section because we'll want to know if we can go to the full state or not, but we'll get to that in just a minute. First, we need to determine when we set to grow and a way to set to shrink. So I'll come back up here to our space is down and I'm gonna highlight the whole block and I'm gonna press X on the keyboard to get an else statement. So now space is down, set meter state to grow. Otherwise, we'll set the meter state to shrink. So let's add an action, go to our player, scroll down to set value. And our meter state in between quotation marks, we'll type in shrink. Okay, I'm going to go into debug layout so I can see these variables change. I'm gonna to go to player and I'm gonna look at our meter state. It's set to shrink right now because the space bar is not down. But when I hold on to the space bar, you see it changes to grow and our bars keep adding. But when I let go, it changes to shrink and it deletes at the same pace that it added. Grows and then it stops. I'm still holding the space bar down. And then when I release, it goes to shrink and it keeps deleting them until there's none left and it can't run the code anymore. We now have functionality. I would also like to point out that if we hold the space down and then move our player around, uh, as I stated before, we uh, have the ability to make our meter follow our player. Okay, and let's make sure we're saving. Okay, so we have some things to change up here. First off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this event and I'm going to go to add and I'm gonna get a comment. And this comment is placed right above our meter grow. So I am going to type in meter grow. And then you can do this if you want, you don't have to, this is just going to make it able to uh, read through a lot better. When you add comments, you also have the ability to right click on them and you can change the text color and the background color. I like my background color, pretty dark. And then I like my text color to be uh, kind of like this slightly yellow so that it's bright and there's a lot of contrast going on. 
Okay, so we have a meter grow, and then I'm going to click on it to highlight it, hold control, click and drag a copy. And by doing this, it takes the color, the background color and the text color with it. So I always create one how I want it, and then I just copy them from there so that they're all the same. So down here, I'm going to double click to go into this one, and I'm gonna change grow to shrink. And then I will come down here, drag a copy down, and change shrink to full. And then back up here, I'm gonna copy one more to the top of the group, and I'm gonna call this one set state. Because this is gonna determine what state we're in by holding the space bar down or letting up on the space bar. Now we can more easily see which section we're in. So I wanna to add to this functionality up here. I like that we can press the space bar and grow our meter, but I only want it to happen when our player meets the condition of either being close enough or overlapping our objective. So in the event sheet, I am going to right click and add insert above so that we have one inserted above our spaces down event. And I am going to go to our player and I'm gonna type in overlapping another object and we'll click to choose our goal object. So now when we're overlapping the goal object and we're pressing the space key, we'll set it to grow. But that will only work if this takes place first and then this takes place. So we need to highlight this whole thing, click and drag it, and then move it to the right until that line indents, and then we can let go, and now it's a sub event. We'll need to do the same thing with our else statement because we want it to be indented the same amount as this event. I'm going to click and drag it till it's flush with this spaces down, but it needs to be below, so I will now drag the spaces down event up above the else. And you see it was red, and now it's not red. That tells us that we don't have errors anymore. So we have a partially working mechanic here because if it's overlapping the goal, then we can run is space down or not. If we're not overlapping the goal, then none of this is taking place, which means if we should happen to set it to grow, and we move out of the way, we're not overlapping goal anymore, we'll never be able to set it back to shrink because this will only take place as long as we're overlapping the goal. So outside of this whole event, we need to check for if we're not overlapping. So I'm going to right click on the event and add or insert below. And we'll go get our player and I'm gonna type in overlapping another object. We'll click to choose the goal, hit done. And now it should be indented back from these, but flush with our overlapping goal. Now, these are the same event right now, but if we highlight just the event itself, press I on the keyboard, puts an X in front of it that inverts it. So this means we are overlapping. This means we're not overlapping. And if we're not overlapping, no matter what's happening, even if space is down or not, if we're not overlapping the goal, then I don't want the meter to be able to grow but I do want it to shrink if there's bars on screen. So I'm gonna highlight this set state to shrink. Control, click, drag, a copy. If we're overlapping the goal, space is down, set to grow. If space is not down, set to shrink. If we're not overlapping the goal at all, set to shrink. Okay, let's go test that out. Okay, I'm hitting the space bar before it was creating bars no matter where we were on the screen, but now nothing, and if I overlap, there's our bars. If I move out of the way, I'm still holding the space bar, but it's set to shrink. So still holding the space bar. So it's doing exactly what we want it to do. All right. Okay. What if I'll play it again? What if we come over here and we hold it and it goes all the way to the top. It fills up the whole radial pattern. I want to tell our game that the meter is full. So if we come down here, we already have our state set up. I need a way to set the state to full. So if we come down to the bottom and say add event to meter, we're adding a brand new event that's not a sub event of anything, just a new event. And I'm gonna go check that bar count. So let's go to our meter spawn object and scroll down to compare instance variable. And I wanna know if our bar count is equal to that other variable, the bar limit, in our meter spawn object. So since we're already in our meter spawn object, I'm just gonna use self dot bar limit. And then 
Uh, I'm just going to move this up into our shrink section. It can really be in any section. I just don't want it down here until we get more code put in our full state. So uh, right above the meter full comment is fine. When our bar count, which we add one to bar count after each bar is created on screen, when that meets the bar limit, which we have set to 10 right now, then we can say the meter's done growing. Let's set it to full. So let's add an action, go into our player object and scroll down to set a value. And our meter state will now be full. If we go into debug layout, We'll go into our player and we can see our meter state here. It's set at shrink by default because the space bar is not down. And I'm going to move into place, press the space bar. There's grow. And when it creates all 10 bars, now meter is to full. But I let go of the space bar and it went to shrink because we haven't set up any code to say that once it's full, we need to do some different things. Okay, I'm going to exit out of that. I think that we're done with the visual part of our meter spawn object when we play the game. So let's make sure that we have that selected on our layout. And over in the properties, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we have initially visible. I want to uncheck that. Now when I play, it's not there and we can create our meter without that square being there. Okay, might as well save while we have an opportunity. And back on the event sheet, what happens when we reach the full state? Well, in the example I showed you at the beginning of the video, we turned the player object blue. So that's going to be our ultimate goal is turn our player blue. To do that, we're going to need to make sure that our player can be blue. So let's double click in the project panel on our player object to open it up in the animations editor. And I'm going to right click on this frame down here and duplicate. And then with that second frame selected, I'll go to my paint bucket tool and I'm just going to get me a blue color. I think I like that just fine. And I'll color it blue. And everything else should be exactly the same because we duplicated these, this first frame. Okay, before we leave the animations editor, let's click on the animation one and they'll bring up the animation properties. I have my projects set by default at a speed of zero. I set that up in the settings for construct three. Yours may not have that. Make sure that speed is set to zero because if not, as soon as you start the game, it's gonna be green for one frame and then it's gonna change to blue and it's gonna stay blue. Once we set speed to zero, we won't have to do anything else. And when we reach the full state, I'm going to change it to that blue frame, which if we look here, Animation frame zero is green, animation frame one is blue. So let's add an action to this, go into our player, and we want to set frame. And we'll set frame to one. And we can go ahead and actually play that. And I'm green until the meter gets full, and then I'm blue. And it stays blue because we haven't told it to change back to green yet. Okay, once the meter is full, we also don't need it anymore. So we can add an action, go into our meter bar object and type in destroy. Up here, we specified which meter bar by the meter bars instance variable bar number. Here, we're not specifying that. We're just saying if it's in the full state, delete the bar, which is gonna delete all of them. We can go ahead and make sure that's true. And there it is. I changed blue, the bars disappeared. Once we have set our goal, which is turn the player blue, delete the meter bar, now we want to make sure our bar count is reset as well. Add an action, go to our meter spawn object, let's scroll down to set value of our bar count, make sure that, that goes back down to zero. So one of the things that was happening before, before we destroyed all the bars, was if I let up off the space bar, it would start shrinking because of this code right here. So I don't want any of this functionality taking place, anything under the set state comment here. I don't want this taking place if we have already reached the full state. So what we can say up here is none of this take place if we're in the full state. And I will just right click on this top event and I'm going to add insert above and I'm gonna to go to player and let's go down to compare instance variable. And if our meter state is equal to full, and then I will click on the event itself and hit I to invert it. 
Now, as long as the state is anything other than full, then we can run this code. But for that to be true, all of this code will need to be a sub-event of this statement. So if we make sure we highlight all of this code under our set state, click and drag it up and indent it, let go, and now everything is a sub-event of this condition. All right, I'm going to set up a little debug of our own. I'm gonna make it to where if I press the R key on the keyboard, it'll reset everything so we can test out different elements. So let's go into our setup group and I'm going to add an event to setup and go get the keyboard and on key pressed and I'll click to choose the R key. And I wanna reset everything. So let's add an action, get our meter bar and just destroy all of them. And then I'm gonna add another action. I'm gonna make sure our bar count inside of our meter spawn object is set to zero. And then I'm going to add another action, go into our player and set that frame back to zero. That will be our green color. And then one last one, let's add an action, go into our player, scroll down to set value. And we'll just set this back to shrink that way when shrink is running, it doesn't matter if bars are on screen or not, because if it's not greater than zero, none of this will run. So it doesn't hurt it to just be in the shrink state by default. We only go to the grow state when we are growing the meter, the full state when the meter is full. Otherwise, we'll just be in the shrink state. Okay, so that sets us up a little debug. I'm going to close that back up. So that is essentially how this works. Everything else that we're doing from this point is manipulating visually how it looks. But because of some of the ways that I am going to create this effect, we'll have to add a little bit extra code in a couple of other areas. So stick with me if you'd like to see the different looks we can give this. Right now we have 10 bars. Yeah, we have 10 bars. So I'm going to go into our meter spawn object and over in the properties, I'm gonna change bar limit to uh, let's just say like 16 and then I'm going to take meter speed and I'm going to say 0.2. That should help speed things up a little bit. And there we go. It's still kind of slow, but it also depends on what you're using this for. Okay. I'm going to give our meter bar a visual effect. So if we select the meter bar object and then go into the properties, let's go to edit behaviors, add new behavior, and I'm going to get the tween behavior. So now I want to tween a value, which is going to be the scale once each bar is created. So in our meter grow, I'm going to right click on the top event, add insert below, and I'm gonna go into our meter bar object and say when it is created, so on created, and it puts it down here and its indention is flush with our meter state grow event. So on created, let's add an action, Go into our meter bar object and scroll down to the tween behavior to tween two properties. And the reason I want two properties is because I want the scale, which is the X and the Y. So I'm going to choose scale and the end X scale is going to be its full size, which is one. And the end Y will also be one. And then the time that it takes, uh, let's set it at zero point and one other thing, we're going to need to reference this. So let's in between quotation marks up here in the tags section, I'm just gonna call this grow. So a couple of things. One, this green arrow says that this is a triggered event, which means it's only going to occur once when it is triggered. So when it is created, it's going to tween this one time, each bar. But it's tweening to its full scale. But when it's created, it's created in its full scale. So when we create it up here, when we spawn it, we need to set it at, I'm gonna set it at zero so it grows the full amount. So let's add an action to this section, go into meter bar, and I'm going to type in set scale to zero. And now if we play that, we can test part of this out. Now you see we have a little bit of an effect going on. And we also ran into another issue. It didn't look like it completed and it already sent us to the full state. And now that we have that debug set up, I can press R and reset everything. And 
If I let up on space, we don't have an effect set up for that yet. So that doesn't affect out. But if you see, it didn't have time to create that last bar before it said we were already finished. So let's exit out of that. And before we take care of that other issue, let's work on the shrink state real quick. So down here where we destroy and subtract one from bar count, we can actually highlight this destroy and press D. That'll put a line through it that just disables it. That means it will now not destroy the bar. Instead of destroying it there, we're going to destroy it in between. So let's add an action, go into our meter bar, and I'm going to scroll down to tween two properties. And I'm going to give this a tag of shrink. And the property is going to be the scale. End X and end Y are both going to be zero. And the time is going to be the same amount of time as it took to grow, which we set it at 0.2. We got rid of the destroy action up here, but we can come down here and destroy on complete, we can change to yes. So now, once this tween is done, 0.2 seconds later, it will go ahead and delete the object for us. So let's play that, and let's see what that looks like. If I let up, it animates out the same way that it animated on. But we do still have the problem of when it does get full. We just have some animations taking place that are taking up extra time. And like I said before, we will get to that in just a minute. I want to finish up the state animations though. So let's move on to the full state. Let's add an action here and go into the bars. And we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to tween two properties. And I'll go ahead and call this one full. And we'll go scale. And our end scale is going to be zero. The time, uh, we'll let this take a little bit longer. Let's say 0 0.4. Now, if we do it this way, and we let it go, it's uh, not taking place because we still have this destroy up here. So we can highlight that and delete it or press D to disable it. I'm going to go ahead and delete mine. And now let's try that again. We'll let the meter fill up, and the whole thing animates out. It uh, looks like very slowly. That's because our meter state is set to full, but this is not a triggered event. This is happening every frame. So it's taking a really long time for these values to reach a scale of zero. So since we don't have a triggered event and we only want this to happen once, we need to trigger it to only happen once. And we do that with a trigger once while true. And to insert that, we're going to make sure that it happens only once our meter state is set to full. So let's click and highlight this whole block of code, press B for a sub event. And I'm going to grab everything and drag it and put it down in this new sub event. Now we can double click in this sub event, go into system. I'm going to type in trigger once while true. So now it should just happen once. It should solve our problem. And there it goes. Uh, Again, we do have this issue. The reason is the timing. So once we reach the full state, I want to wait before we start doing all this other stuff. So I'm going to add an action and go into system and just type in wait. And I'll wait, let's say 0.4 seconds. And then I'm going to move that to the top and let's see what that looks like. Now we should be able to animate all the way in and then it disappears. So that's a much better, more natural looking way of animating our bar out. But I'm also gonna make the meter bar turn blue like our player when it is full. So I am going to first go into our player and I'm going to get our blue player, the eyedrop tool, and I'm going to sample this blue color. Make sure that that blue color appears in this first palette here. And then I can exit out of that and let's go into our meter bar and I'm going to right click on that first frame, duplicate, and then get the paint bucket tool and our blue color is still saved in there and I'll just fill that in blue. And the same thing here, click on the animation one and make sure that speed is set to zero. Okay, let's hit that save button while we're thinking about it. And then I'm gonna come down here right after our four seconds I'm going to set that animation frame. So let's add an action, go into meter bar, set frame to one. 
and then I'll move that up to the top. So that happens as soon as our four seconds are up. So we can play real quick just to make sure that that's working. And there we go. Looks good. In fact, what we can do is time this out even better by turning that blue and then going into the tween animation. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to highlight this wait 0.4 seconds and I'm going to control click and drag a copy down below our set animation frame. And to see what's going on here, I'm going to move our tween up under that second weight. So let's go into this first weight and I'm just going to have this at 0.1. So as soon as that last bar is created, it's going to wait 0.1 seconds, turn it blue, and then we can come in here and let's go into this weight and go 0.2 seconds. So we're still waiting a total of uh, 0.3 seconds before we play the tween. I took one tenth of a second off because it did look like it was waiting there for a little bit before it animated out. So let's go ahead and play that. And if we get all the way full, so it is turning blue a little quick. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to change that. Since our tween time up here is 0.2 seconds, then we should at least be 0.2 here to make sure it has time to tween in. This is just test and test and retest. And much better. That was a much smoother operation there. Okay, I like that. One thing we can add to this tween when it animates out is put an ease on it. If we click to go into it, we can come down here to the ease and you can play around with these to see what they look like. I am going to use a in back. That way, the first part of the animation is going to expand and then shrink. So let's see what that looks like. And there we go. You see that little, almost like a bounce effect before it shrinks out, okay? You could do the same with these tweens up here. You could give them eases as well. Uh, I'm going to leave mine where they are. I think you can probably grasp the concept of that on your own. Now, uh, let's try out a different effect. And I really kind of like how this one works. So I'm going to come into our grow state. And where we have our on created tween, I am going to highlight that control C to copy, control V to paste. And then just pick one of them and hit D to disable it. So we can just double click to go into this one that's not disabled. And we have a tween two properties. I want to only tween one property. So let's hit the back button and then scroll up and get tween one property. And here, I'm gonna change that property to opacity. And the end value in our grow state will be 100 as 100% 100 opacity. And the time is going to be that same 0.2 seconds. And I'll hit done. And then if we scroll down in our shrink, we can do the same thing here. Highlight that, control C to copy, control V to paste. Let's disable one of them. Go into the one that's not disabled. Hit back, scroll up, get one property. Change that property to opacity. And the end value this time is going to be zero because we're shrinking it. And the time is going to be that 0.2. And then destroy on complete. We want to make sure that we do destroy it because we are subtracting one from bar count when we do. In fact, I don't want to subtract bar count until after we have tweened it away. So I'm going to drag that action down below our last tween. Okay, so this uh, won't work just yet because up here we set scale to zero and then we tried to tween it to full scale, but now those are disabled, so it's not going to grow. It's just going to create them at a scale of zero. So we can hit D to disable that. And then let's add an action, go into meter bar, and I'm going to type in opacity, set opacity to zero. So now it's going to create it completely transparent, and then we'll tween it into full opacity. And then when we shrink, we will tween its opacity back down to zero and then it will delete in that tween and we'll subtract from bar count. So let's play that. And there we go. We just kind of fade in. It's a little bit more subtle of an effect and oy, it, uh, we, we do have an issue there. That looks like when we are shrinking that our tween is doing something weird. Shrink opacity 0 0.2. Oh, 
Uh, for some reason, mine has loop turned to yes. We do not want that. We only want destroy on complete. Don't know how that got past me. Okay, let's play that. So now we have this uh, fading effect. And uh, it's a little more subtle look. I like it. I really like our shrink out effect there. Okay, a couple other things I want to change real quick. Let's go into our every meter spawn dot meter speed seconds, which in our meter spawn object, we have set to 0.2. So I'm going to use something called delta time. I have explained this briefly in other videos. I'm not going to waste too much time here. This just makes sure that everything happens at the same speed, no matter how many frames per second your game is playing at. And I'm just going to leave it at that for right now. I'm going to take our meter spawn dot meter speed and multiply it times dt, which is delta time. And then we can come down here to our shrink and do the same thing here. Every meter spawn dot meter speed seconds multiply by delta time. So now that means that our meter speed value is going to be different because delta time changes how this value is read. But instead of using decimal points, we can actually just change this to a full round number. Like I'm going to go with eight. Now, if we play, it goes a little faster. Uh, we can actually increase that to, let's say nine. And uh, it's, it's a little, so I'll go 12, see what that does for us. So you kind of get the idea. Uh, let's go 20, see what that looks like. So that's much slower. But there's something else I want to do. So for bar limit, let's go 50. And I'll show you. It goes really slow, but it creates a cool little circle that fades in. So I'm going to change our speed back down to that 8. And let's bump this up to something like 70. Then I'll play that. Kind of cool looking. So I'm going to take this down to, let's say, uh, 30. And now we can go into our meter bar object. And I'm going to get our selection tool. And with our grid set at 8 by 8, I can just draw a box around this up to where there's only these two grid size of the bar left. And I'll hit delete on that selected section. So this is all I have now of my meter bar. And we'll need to go into our blue one and do the same thing. And then we can play that. And now we have just kind of this almost like a power meter look to it. And this is probably my favorite look. I think it animates out a lot better as well. So that is going to do it for this video. I hope you can find some use out of this. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that thumbs up for me. That helps me out. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that big red button. Make sure that bell is turned on. Stay safe out there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Go look at that real quick and debug. Hit the player, and it's still shrink. <laughs> well, I guess I overlooked that part. Probably should leave that out. <laughs>